Sacramento is one of the wildest cities on the west coast. Almost every block is ran by a different set, and just walking out the door is a gamble with your life. Briss was a rapper trying to make it out of the trenches, but the streets caught up to him first. And today we're breaking down the entire shocking story. Briss came up in Sacramento repping the Fruit Ridge Bloods. Back in the day, all he cared about was getting his money up and hustling in the streets. And not before long, he started taking losses. After one of his childhood friends was killed, Briss knew he wanted to switch up how he moved. But there ain't a lot of opportunities coming up in that environment. Briss said he wasn't the worst kid in school or anything like that, but he was more focused on hustling than getting good grades. He didn't have no other way to get money back then, but luckily for him, one of his blood cousins was starting to get his name popping in the rap industry. Mac J is another rapper from Sacramento who came up from nothing. His parents tried to provide a better life for him and his four siblings by working minimum wage jobs and flipping cars on the side, but Mac realized that he had to find a different way out. When he was a kid, Mac saw one of his dad's friends bleed out on the front porch after someone shot him. Back then, he thought basketball was his ticket out of the trenches, but his hoop dreams fell apart and Mac turned to rap instead. He started recording tracks in one of his family members' garages in high school. Mac had been rapping for years already as a hobby and was ready to take it seriously. But after he dropped out of school, he fell into the streets right next to Briss and their homies. While Briss was all in on the street activities, Mac kept one foot in the booth and stayed on his grind. Both of them were in and out of jail a lot, but Mac went back to the studio every time he got released. Not before long, he had some buzz on his name in the city, and that's when he finally convinced Briss to start laying down tracks too. The first video they dropped together was for the track Nonstop in 2016. It racked up a couple hundred thousand views on YouTube, but it would take a couple years before Briss scored his first big hit. 2019 was a massive year for him. Out of nowhere, he started popping off and running up crazy numbers. His track Lightning McQueen hit over 2 mil, and then he dropped a video for panhandling and reached 15 million. All the success was amazing, but it also allegedly sparked the beef that got him killed. In an interview with Rap Shack, Briss said there was a lot of drama in music. All he wanted was to make it out of the streets, and he told everyone watching that you should never get involved with them if you're not born into it. Briss had been in the trenches for years, but 2019 is when all his beef went public. A rapper named Uzzy Marcus dropped the track 42k and said, Keep it real, you niggas ain't killed a fly. And if it's money on my head, why the fuck I'm still alive? You niggas ain't popping shit, they really just talking shit. Where they at? I'm right here on 42nd with the stick. Lil Briss, he a pussy, and Lil Danny, he a bitch. Keep playing, I'll be outside your grannies with the switch. The beef between Uzzy and Briss picked up a lot of publicity, but the issues went way deeper than just those two. Both of them was on different sides of a wild beef in Sacramento that turned the city into a war zone. Briss was rocking with a dude named CML Lavish D, who's affiliated with a set called the G Parkway Stars, while Uzi was tied with Mozzie. But before we get into why Briss was brutally killed in his own city, let's break down what was going down behind the scenes. Mozzie came up in a Sacramento neighborhood called Oak Park. His mom was a drug addict and his dad was locked up, so Mozzie hopped in the trenches to support himself. While he was in and out of jail for charges like illegal possession of a firearm and evading the police, Mozzie was also putting in work in the booth. 2010 is when he first started dropping music, but 2014 is when it really started popping off. He dropped a diss track aimed at Lavish D called I'm Just Being Honest and rapped, We can pistol play, but that ain't something you want to do. I'm just being honest. Lav never caught a body. I'm just being honest. Mozzie wasn't the first one to take a shot though. Lavish D's homie Lick rode into Oak Park and shot an entire music video. Then Mozzie clapped back with the truth, and less than a day later, one of his homies was killed over the situation. A dude named Zilla Zoe was in the music video with Mozzie while he was calling out the ops by name, and a few hours after the track dropped, someone called Zilla and shot him to death. But Zilla wasn't the only victim in their beef though. Lavish D was at a mall in Sacramento with his crew when he spotted Mozzie's manager. They all put hands on him and posted a video of the situation online, which was a bad move for Lavish D. He was already fighting a gun case and had a bunch of priors on his record, so the judge hit him with a six-year sentence. Locking up Lavish D ain't stopped the violence though, and from that point on, it just got even more brutal. In May 2014, Mozzie's homie Jacoby James was shot and killed at a kid's birthday party. It was a wild hit, and two dudes affiliated with Lavish D were arrested for it, but eventually the case was dropped and they both got off. Then in 2015, Mozzie and Oak Park took another loss when a dude named Shaquem Murray was caught outside a party and killed. Oak Park allegedly tried to get back at the stars by using a girl to set one of them up, but according to rumors, the stars figured out what was about to go down and killed her instead. It was already one of the deadliest beefs in the rap game, but it still wasn't over yet. On the 4th of July 2016, Lavish D's homie Stunna D was leaving a party on the south side of the city when someone rolled up on him and started letting off shots. Stunna tragically didn't make it out alive, 
and he wasn't the last dude in Lavish's camp who got hit up. A dude named Prince Strader was like Lavish D's right hand man. He had been holding it down for the crew while Lavish was locked up. But in June 2017, the ops caught him lacking outside of a liquor store and shot him eight times. Luckily, Drado was able to pull through, but the next shooting cost someone their life. By August 2017, Lavish D was out on parole wearing an ankle monitor. He rode up to a music video set to show support for a rapper named Sebo, who also had beef with Mozzie. While they were filming the video, someone slid through and started letting off shots. Five people got hit and had to be rushed to the hospital, while a 49-year-old bystander named Ernie Cadena was tragically pronounced dead at the scene. Mozzie allegedly wanted to kill Lavish and Sebo at the same time, and three of his affiliates eventually went down for the shooting. Since Briss was rocking with Lavish D, he inherited his beef with Mozzie and his team, which included Uzzy Marcus. Way before the situation with Briss ever popped off, Uzzy was already making headlines for his street activities. In 2012, he was allegedly involved with the shooting of a three-year-old. Him and his homies allegedly slid on a dude named Jorge Azios. But when they started letting off shots, they ended up killing the son who was in the back seat instead. Uzzy's homie, Anthony Canales, allegedly wanted to get back at Azios for shooting his brother in the hand a year earlier. During the trial, they both flipped on each other. But Uzzy obviously didn't go down for murder because he was back on the streets within a couple of years. Uzzy ain't the only dude in his family who was involved in a wild case though. Back in 2014, Uzzy's brother Antoine was booked for killing a woman named Nicole Duarte. What makes the situation really wild though is that Nicole was dating their older brother Raymond, who was allegedly there when it went down. Antoine ended up pleading no contest to voluntary manslaughter and has been locked up ever since. But in 2028, he'll actually be up for parole. It's not clear why Antoine shot her, but Nicole managed to go to a neighbor's place to get help and firefighters rushed her to the hospital. But it was too late to save her and she tragically died a few days later. The whole situation was crazy but it's nothing compared to what happened with Raymond a couple years ago. In 2021, Raymond went live on Instagram and showed something incredibly shocking. He had murdered his girlfriend and another woman and was crouching down next to him holding a gun. Raymond was pointing the gun at the camera, then he lifted one of the dead woman's hands and said, that bitch tried to set me up, that's what she did. Then he brought Uzzy into it and accused him of trying to have him killed. A SWAT team rolled up and tried to negotiate with Raymond to come out peacefully, but it was clear he wasn't going down like that. They had a standoff with him for eight hours, then finally started throwing in tear gas grenades. Raymond still tried to fight them off, but after they tased him, he went down hard and got booked for double homicide. Uzi went on no jumper and talks about the situation later. He said he was never really that tight with Raymond because he was locked up for six years back when they were young. Uzi also said that Raymond had some serious mental issues. I couldn't never really, like, like I said, I couldn't, I never really got close to my brother all the way because hmm. he was always living a whole nother life than me. We never really, I grew up as I was a grown man, so I never was around siblings or nothing. Once I did what I was doing, I was away from home, everybody. Right. But shit, that shit just, it strike me though. It, it surprised the shit out of me. I, right. thought, I thought that shit was fake or something. Well, especially because your name was in it. So, yeah, oh. no, but after that, I was just like, man, it's mental issues. People got mental issues. He had no idea why he thought Uzi was trying to kill him. Uzi was already rocking with Mozzie and sending shots at Lavish D. So when Briss started popping off, nobody was surprised when he got dissed too. After Uzi dissed him, Briss allegedly clapped back with the track Spark the Fuse and rapped, y'all just sparked the fuse. That mean it started back. I ain't tripping off the funk. It been a part of that. Hit his starter cap and make him fall and push his starter back. I just bought a strap. If it don't kill you, it'll cause a heart attack. Everyone thought Briss was dissing Uzi, but Mac J said the track had been recorded months before everything popped off and that Briss never made a diss track aimed at anyone in his whole career. While the beef was turning up, Briss was taking everything to the next level in the industry. He dropped a collab tape with Mac J and another one with his homie G-Man. His fan base was growing every day and a ton of powerful people in the industry had him on their radar. But right when it seemed like he was out of the streets for good, Briss caught a gun charge for holding a strap in one of his music videos. He got booked and had to sit down for a minute, but when he got out, he was hotter than ever. The first track he dropped after getting out of jail racked up millions of views and proved that the gun case ain't slowing down at all. Briss already knew that he wanted to get out of the streets, but having kids made him realize that he had to start moving smarter. And in an interview with Thizzler, he talks about how important it was to stay alive for his kids. That's just the main reason I know like I gotta stay alive out here, you feel me? He was blowing up at a crazy pace and had major labels reaching out. His first freestyle video when he came back from prison proved how much momentum he already had, but nobody knew that he would only release three more tracks before he tragically died. In June 2020, Briss dropped the video for his track Need Hammy and it blew up off the rip. Fans knew that he was a certified hit maker who was on his way to taking over, but just five days later, he was brutally gunned down after crashing his whip. It's not clear if Briss got shot before the wreck, 
but after he ran into a pole, he tried to escape on foot. Unfortunately, the ops were too quick though, and they caught up to him and shot him in the back. Fruit Ridge and Oak Park have always had problems. Uzzy and Briss had beef, plus they were all tied to the Mozzie and Lavish D war. So after Briss died, a lot of people jumped on the idea that Oak Park was behind the hit. Another crazy detail about the situation is that Briss used to be in a relationship with Uzzy's baby mama. According to rumors, he cheated on her and got someone else pregnant, so she linked up with his op to get revenge. All signs pointed to Uzzy and Oak Park killing Briss, but then a dude named Moses Hirschfield ended up getting booked for his murder. Moses and Uzzy don't have any ties together, but Moses was allegedly affiliated with a different crew that had tension with Fruit Ridge. No matter who took him out, Briss's death was a massive loss for the rap game. Everyone around him knew he had the potential to be a star, and he was running up the numbers to prove it. He knew he wanted to leave the streets behind and make a better life for his kids, but unfortunately, he never got the chance to really make it out.